Uh, do sorry, predictions. let me correct that. I'll do that every game. Uh, as we look into Nuke, it's uh, one that I'm still going to favor Divine Vendetta on massively. I don't think this is somewhere Bren will perform. Uh, we said it from the very beginning. This whole veto was sided towards Divine Vendetta. We did question the map picks. Uh, Bren picking Inferno was odd. We knew that Divine Vendetta would be good there. I don't think any of us will have the balls to pretend for a second like we thought it was going to be as one-sided as it was. But we definitely expected Divine Vendetta to do well. Coming on the Nuke, I expect that momentum to carry forward. Bren are going to have a really rough time. And if they're going to take this map, it's got to be absolutely everybody showing up. We have to see Wits on that AWP. They need that control on the CT side, and it's something that's been lacking again and again for them. And Derek, my man Derek, needs to get back to the form he was on over on Dust2, where he finished with 28 kills. But in the previous map, both himself and Wits finished on three. That's, that's not good. Sounds like... Uh... Kind of scrolling, you'd have playing against Dinko again on the rematch. But I don't know if uh, the stats believe in that one, but okay, all right. Like I said before, one map doesn't matter. It can easily yeah, skew it, things. It, it influences. For, for, for Bren, they did actually get Invictus into overtime on this map. I think they lost 17 to 19. Then again, that's also Invictus that we're not sure was necessarily fully trying for lack of saying it, you know, a more peaceful way. It obviously, it was a match that they ran into not really tr having to try hard or not expecting to try hard on. And then they got pushed it over time, but they still won the end for Invictus. And, and going into this, like Davdov, if he has a decent start, I feel like they're not going to stop him, especially if they get CT side where he really shines. Well, you know, when you look towards the terror side for Divine Vendetta, this is somewhere that they perform pretty consistently well. Up against Beyond and Vici, they found seven rounds most recently. Um, Tiger wasn't great. You remember that game because it was where they went down 4 11 at the halftime. We were bringing up how, oh, well. When you only get four rounds T side, you know, typically you're not going to be winning the game. That was good on old Nuke way back in the day. But at the moment, it just doesn't cut it. And then they won 16-13. They found a 12-2 CT side. Thing is, I don't find any flaws on Nuke for Divine Vendetta. There's nothing I can look at and say, oh, well, that's why they'll lose. Or that's what gives Bran a chance. And even when I do look at the results, you know, yes... They lost to Invictus in OT. They lost to D13 in OT. And they beat Lucid Dream fairly convincingly, 16-8. to eight. Again, a pretty good T-side on display from them there as well. I just don't know if they have, after that previous map, if they're going to have the turnaround. Because you can be uncomfortable on a map. Sure, I'll give you that. But they've played Inferno quite a bit. Uh, in fact, it was something we were saying maybe they would have chosen. Then when we... Or sorry, it was something we were saying that Divine Vendetta could have chosen, but they picked the map, so obviously they felt comfortable on it. But to have two of your main players you need to show up, your Opper and Derek, your star player by a mile, finishing on six kills combined, how do you turn that around coming in a nuke? How do you walk out of there with your head held high and say, hey, we've got him on the next one, guys? I mean, it's easier mentally to lose a, a match like that. I think than to lose a match that's close because you you can obviously chalk up to a 16-1. All right, we messed up here. Oh, you know we were letting these things slip. It's really it, it's glaringly obvious where the mistakes are. Where it's in the close match, you're just gonna be down yourself about oh if I didn't mess up this one little play. Oh if I got this one kill, maybe we could have won the whole game. Mm -hmm. I think they could bounce back on Nuke to what kind of scoreline? I honestly am not sure. And also I'm not sure exactly why we haven't hopped in a game yet. I believe we're having some still technical issues for some of the players. Hopefully it's not a calm issue. Again, for uh, for Bren, if, if it is, maybe it wasn't fixed on the last map because it sure as hell looked like they were having some problems there. But hopefully we get the sorted. We still have one more game that's coming up today. It's going to be Vici game up against D13. That should be quite exciting, Mitch. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that game, actually. I want to see if D13 can carry momentum from yesterday. Oh, yeah. Vici D13 is going to be an absolute banger of a series. I mean, you look at that. Both teams still have a lot to play for when it comes down to seeding. And D13 want to be up towards that top four, which is possible if they win this game. Again, it depends on their head-to-heads with Tiger Beyond, and I can't remember what that was like, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. For now, Jason, it looks like we're just about ready to get on into things. As we swap back over to the players' perspectives, let's hope the issues are fixed. Certainly, I like that point you made about the comms. Yeah, we had a comm issue at the start of the previous map. I think it was a team speak crash or something. And so... Maybe that explains it. Maybe they just played the whole map without comms. I mean, that would be a realistic answer or reason 
maybe to what happened last game, especially in that that one v three at a Pokemon in the second or in the pissed around the second half, just getting one on one peaks. There was three players alive, and yet they didn't challenge about the same time at a single moment there, which is. And the first one I can understand. The first one, yeah, you get away with that because obviously you need to watch the backside, right? You need to be careful of someone coming in through uh, apartments. You still have time to work with. But after that first kill comes through, I mean, you, you gotta watch the bomb and you gotta watch it together. But it looks like we're going to knife round here in about seven seconds. Fingers crossed. Oh, it was less than seven, Jason. You've lied to me. I'm I'm hurt and I'm appalled. So this knife round is very important. Uh, I think both teams have got a pretty good T side from what we've seen. Uh, I was mentioning the games that we had them play in the past. The average after six six games starting on the T side for Divine Vendetta versus Beyond, Vici, Tiger, Lucid Dream, Invictus, and Mazaline. Bit of a mixed bag there. They averaged out on seven rounds. Thing is, the most recent ones versus Beyond and Vici were where they found those seven. Uh, on the dot and they look really really strong over on the brand side Again, they're looking at a very small sample size. So I won't even go near the averages, but Six rounds T side versus Invictus nine versus lucid dream eight out of 15 as well versus d13 It's pretty good T side against pretty good teams I think either can perform really and it's divine vendetta. They're gonna have the weight of the world on their shoulders Yeah is going to be, I don't know, a game that they should win. I would assume. You know what they say, Jason? Assuming yeah. is sometimes the best thing that you can do because you have to make a prediction. I mean, they're starting off on T side, and that's that's the only slight worry I have. Like, they're, they're a stronger CT side, especially with Davdog. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been a massive offer for them and generally one of the top fraggers. And they're going to stick around towards ramp and you can see Witch just catches Havoc on the peak. We retreated back down. They're hoping that Divine, or sorry, that uh, Bren get aggressive somewhere. Maybe get an easy kill, but look how far Yaw, uh, Jaws actually pushed up. Yeah, he's staying close around. Quite aggressive considering the man advantage they've got. I actually don't like that. If they just barrel towards him with all the Glocks, that's a kill they get. And uh, finding one kill would probably be the best you'd accept from him. With one minute left, Divine Vendetta leave ramp though, and they move out towards outside, leaving Pokemon as an anchor. Once they make noise here, hopefully that will drag Jab back up the ramp. At least that's what they hope. But he's gone down to Secret to play it at the back of the bomb site on B, maintaining a lot of the control down there. Going in for a split on Heaven by the looks of things. Or maybe just in towards the A site and allow Pokemon to get that flying caught. But they're not winning these duels. The reload for Ezram as the peak comes through. But two quick kills. Pokemon got the flying to Wits. It was very much concentrated towards outside. And that's perfect. I mean, they used that ramp control to perfection. That's why you see them standing outside, right? You're thinking, why are they not pushing in? Why are they not going for these fights? They just stood there shouting around, but that's exactly why, because Pokemon had to get that flank on, and as soon as he's dropped Davdov trades to put it 1-0 to zero and get Divine Vendetta on the board. I mentioned their T-side has been solid. They've actually started on the T-side six out of eight times that they've played really? new. Yeah, vast majority. It's quite odd. I always felt like they were a stronger CT side. When Davdov gets the op, I mean, it's much harder to op on the T side, I, I feel like you're on nuke. And that's, I guarantee it's because of the Tiger game we watched, remember, where they found, like I was saying, they got four rounds T side, but then right. 12 CT to close it out. It was nuts. Pretty nutty start for that. Oh, jaw. And he's not been spotted. Davdov was really close to picking up that kill. You see him spamming away through this one. They really want to get an early frag, Edgem. I mean, you gotta be careful. He's got the bomb. Definitely cannot afford to push through this. And Jaw's just gonna back away, but he might have some company again. We're seeing Ryan Vendetta play this a little slow. Once you run into pistols, they wanna lose that on too many guns here. They do have an ump for Tyke. I think it's kind of interesting to see the ump over the Mac 10. Dada yeah, will connect on the first, and it looks like they might try to push in towards ramp. If anything to hold it, they still have so much time left to go. 
Wits connects with the first shot with the scout, but well, the first is not going to be enough. That's still going to be all five players left alive for Divine Vendettas and make their way now down towards lower. At least have a couple of players here. Pro is going to get one, but he'll be quickly traded out. Havoc going to get a second, so that should do it. Poppy Chula left alone, and Havoc's not done. That's a 3k from him. And Divine Vendetta will just continuing from Inferno. Well, that's what we talked about, right? The momentum of Inferno carrying them forward. And I feel like the T side start is almost a blessing for them for two reasons. If they get off to the good start, it's all right. They get to dictate the pace of the game. They're coming in off, off a win and they're feeling confident picking up these early rounds. So it continues that narrative within Bren's heads of we're getting stomped. They're still, they haven't experienced anything since that other than more stomping. The other side is that some of the highlights for Bran would be wits. Like, we need to see him perform on the AWP, on the CT side. Now, if he's slow to warm back up after that previous series, well, he doesn't have an excuse anymore. Because he'll warm up going into the harder side. Really, if I'm to pick for Divine Vendetta, especially considering their T side is... I mean, it's not amazing. It's not like they have the best T side we've ever seen, Jason. They get six or seven rounds most of the time occasionally eight and that's it they do enough groundwork that when they come on to the next half they're in a good or a pretty good position <laughs> i love that little turnaround out of edge room as dives off dies to the usp that john is like wait what where did you die from <laughs> where'd you die usp that long range but you're right like bren after the cooldown from map one you have to worry if they can warm back up into this, and if they do, how long will it really take? They're gonna be rushing straight towards Grand Pokemon. He's gonna lose this AK. He, he has to lose this AK. I guess rotations from his teammates are helping him out. Pokemon will fall. Havoc again. A little three piece for him. Ideally, he doesn't wanna lose this, but they have an AK to secure towards the back of ramp. They're gonna just wait to see if he pushes or if he tries to pick up a weapon. Which honestly, Derek shouldn't be able to accomplish much. Oh. One more kill. So close with the dink. Ezram's going to get the upgrade to an AK. Or Galil. Um, or not. Quest Gen Mark. Guessing, guessing he was tapping in. It just didn't work. Either that or he's decided to keep him Mac 10. But, I mean, I... I don't know about that. Up against the full buy, I'd rather have a Galil. Keep him Mac 10. You can just buy one. Yeah. Well, not exactly. Even if you wanted to use it, just drop it to your drop it to your teammate. A Galil over an AK, but to save the 2.7K, 100% worth it. So, I'm going to guess that that's what happened. That he was pressing E and it didn't work because this game is broken. This is Counter-Strike. Welcome to the madness. But it's, uh... Didn't they say they fixed that a while ago? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they said they did. But I'm pretty sure it still happens to me sometimes. But again, I guess it's like the, the kill feed. They fix it, and then it takes a little bit longer because of the spaghetti code that is CSGO. I mean, I remember the good old days where you could die with the diffuse kit on top of the bomb. And then they couldn't do... Well, I mean, I guess that's technically... You're screwing your own team over. But if you if there's a kit on top of the bomb, you couldn't diffuse. Really? Yeah, you don't remember that? So, no. So well, you know, when so was people used to like, try to shoot a diffuse kit to the bomb. Or like play oh, on top of the fuse kit, so then it would mess you up, so you couldn't defuse. What year are we talking here? Yeah, like 2014, 2015. Oh, that would have been like just as I was coming. So I, I, I would have been really bad at the game. I probably wouldn't have even noticed that. Fuses for losers, anyways. I started playing like 2014. I don't think there's any other like bugs at the time. But right now, either way, if I think about it, Bren. The contesting towards outside. I'm not sure why Divine Vendetta decided to go in towards Garage there. And they had garage. they had a path down towards Secret. What's up? Garage. Garage. <laughs> garage. <laughs> garage. 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 Yeah, that's Terrible how. Garage. That's how English-speaking people say it. But you know. Yeah. Well, we beat you in a war, so we can say it the way we want to say it. Do you know what I heard, Jason? Uh, you're gonna love this. Um, I'm not gonna love it. I'll try to find an article on it afterwards, but it's like Americans actually speak proper English. Like some part of it, I can't remember which. I don't believe like, that. It's the apparently it's closer to the original English than the old one. 
that than what we have in in Europe because we were influenced by Europeans, whereas the Americans just were mostly, or for the longest time, they were just on their own. It was like an isolated English if accent. If you've ever been to the South in the U.S., you would <laughs> not think that this is. Yeah, that's why I say Orleans, certain parts not happening. That's why I say certain parts, like um, just the the kind of generic American accent, as opposed to the <laughs> the deep like Midwest. South. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up afterwards. We can, we can talk about it next Definitely not Boston. Series. No. No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. That's more Irish, I think. Irish. Definitely Indians. not New York. Did you, did you have your uh, your daily coffee? Coffee? <laughs> yeah. You want some water? I, I can't say how they say water. I actually don't. So I lived in the South for a very long time. Like seven years, oh, really? which is a very long time. Didn't pick it up now. And I never got an accent. Thank I, mean, I got a little bit of it. <laughs> I mean, most people say, like, if I talk to them now from the U.S., that I don't really have a full American accent either anymore. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's the thing, is, like, when I, um... Like, obviously, I'm Irish. And when I talk to Are Irish you? people... They're, no, oh, wow. <laughs> when I talk to Irish people, they're like, oh, you've got such an American accent. When I talk to Americans, they say I have a Canadian accent, and Canadians say I have an Irish accent. You don't have a Canadian accent. Oh, uh, I've, I've had some American people think I did. Maybe it's certain words. But there's still yeah, some well, words that come out with an Irish uh, twist. And... We know how smart some Americans are. They, they don't want to wear a mask. <laughs> That's very true, Jason, i gotta, I got to say. Can't take the word for it. I had to argue with the taxi driver to put his mask over his nose, and I'm gonna sit there telling him the mask doesn't work. It's not over I've your nose. A, yeah, I've seen a lot of people do that. Have it like just on their mouth. So what are you doing, bro? Oh, he got reported. I'm not worried. Oh uh, wow! Muzzle. Big rush coming in through squeaky door. Nades come wow. through to absolutely decimate them. Davdov. Oh, he's wow. still there. Well, he was there. He gets burnt up to a crisp, and that's gonna be well. It should be a third round now picked up for Brennan, especially seeing them drop in on top of main. But well, that was just pistols. I mean, that's a round that Brent should win. Gonna tie things up at three apiece. And Divine Vendetta, I mean, it's still, they're still gonna be lacking some pieces on this buy up. I look in the words Divine Vendetta. We're expecting a quick round, I guess. I see lots of utility, so maybe fast into A. Get the mollies up. I see two Molotovs on a pistol round like this. That's generally gonna be go up on top of T roof. Lob your mollies through the smoke on the outside to try and keep a bit of misinformation because it's not a full rush. It takes a second or two for them to get up on the roof and line them up. Sorry, what? Where did, did that run? Throw his Molotov and T spawn. That was very odd. Poppy Chulo lit down, taken out by the Molotov in the end. They haven't spotted up above. Derek was just waiting patiently, finger on the trigger, but not squeezing. And eventually he gets his reward. Two kills. Pulling it back into a man advantage for the CT side and no plant just yet. Smoke down towards main. The drop though. They have no idea. Tyke spotted him now though. Position given away. No support. Jab was trying to be stealthy, get in there and find some damage. But instead he's isolated and Tyke with another a 3k already. Moving towards the vent. He realizes this player will probably be outside at this point. And he can just sneaky beaky get down to the B site, get his plant in. And unbeknownst to him, or maybe it is because it's wits, that's an AWP. It's going to be much harder for him to get anything done down towards mm. the B site than it would be. Imagine the bomb was planted for heaven right now. He's got either side locked down on the ranged angles, but now he's got to come through secret vents, the doors, a lot of problems for him. <sighs> but he now knows where Tyke is. He heard the double doors close. Yeah, but to defuse this bomb. He's got a smoke and he's got a nade. They could smoke this off and try to go for the stick. He does have a kit as well. The door's gonna open and Tyke, I mean, he's, he's not sure it's an off anymore because Wits could obviously pick up another gun and wow, the quick flip comes in. He gets himself a quad kill and the 1v3. I think it's Divine Vendetta onto a fourth round to take the lead. Well done, and we talked about him. He's been quiet this series. Definitely on map number one, but he's shown up here on Nuke. Eight You've kills. Just seen the level of experience Tyke has. In every single fight he took, it was a 1v1. He had the patience, but up against this door, you could see he was waiting for either the doors to open, but more importantly, he was waiting for a smoke to go down. He knew that there was a strong possibility, because they hadn't baited any utility out at the start of the round, 
that the player that was left had a smoke, that he would try to just defuse it inside that smoke, and so he made sure that there was no RNG involved in it. Also, that obviously means Wits' op or M4, whatever it was, wouldn't be primed to fire as he swung those doors open. Well, Very even, smart. Even before that, like, so he goes for the wide peak on the guy towards heaven. Like, so he actually yeah. purposely went out extra far because he knew Wits was in, was in main. And to push through a smoke with an AWP, it's not going to be an easy move to do. So he peeks extra wide, gets confirms that kill, and then goes down vents. And this is going to be tough now. Find Vendetta, leaving it all on Tyke and a one on four. And he's just been spotted out. Just completely swarmed over. Again, they go outside. They go. They don't go straight in towards Seeker. They try to fight for the control. There's not even smokes going down. And they lose the round. I'm not sure why Divine Vendetta are, are playing so differently than what we've seen out of any team on this map. Even themselves. Yeah. Just one more uh, quick point about Tyke as well. When he was in that situation and Wits was the last alive outside, I feel like that highlights very good communication from his teammates because he doesn't have the ability in that situation to check the scoreboard, see who's left alive. Um, so it's good comms. Right there, though, maybe not so good comms or decision-making or something. Why you'd go down secret and come back up to try and take that fight I don't really understand. Maybe just feeling like you could get the trade, like you're superior in the aim duels, but evidently they're not. At least not by enough. And Brand punished them every step of the way, now putting it up four to four. The reality is for the T side trading back rounds is pretty good. As long as you're able to keep it on a an eight seven or so at the half time, you've already got a great half under your belt. So for Bren, it needs to become more consistent. They've got to be coming through with these rounds again and again. And you can see that the T side, I've just pistols in this round. But if I've learned one thing these past three weeks, it's been never discount the Deagles. Yeah, I think that's a lesson we learned many times. I mean, Wits is giving them shots. Luckily for him, none of them, the shots are connecting against him. Except Pro, he's going to fall. AK's going to be picked up for Tyke. Looking for a second kill. Jaw, oh, I don't think he's actually going to expect Jaw to be in this position. Trying to hold the cross, so Wits is going to be safe. And Wits actually retreats away, back in towards sight. Oh, yeah, he's not going to expect that. Nice position out of Jaw. Keeps things at four apiece. And, I mean, Wits shouldn't have to worry. Because Jaws cleared that angle out. And he's still holding that angle. I, I, I mean, I guess they can come in from the upper side, just boost up and over. Oh, great shot by Davdov. The Jaw falling. The Deagles have a better chance. Davdov on another and not able to hit the third. That is going to be the end of the round. But Bren, they've suffered heavy casualties. Considering the investment made for Divine Vendetta, that never should have been that close. That's Deagle switch. <laughs> exactly. That's the problem. The amount of one digs happening today. Tyke's on fire as well. He's having Jeez. such a great game. I feel quite worried for Bren. I know they win the last couple rounds, but like coming into this buy round, again, two of them that they've won so far, and the reason Bren have got so many rounds is just because of weird decision making by Divine Vendetta to, towards outside specifically. The garage push, the secret sort of push, and they came back out to try and take a fight onto heaven. Those kind of decisions really cause you a lot of problems. Uh, oof. Hole the, yeah, hole in the smokes. Massive hole. Massive. I mean, they have one smoke left, but they already lost the initial smoke they needed. Oh my gosh. The crouch peak around the corner into wits. Now they can cross if they need to. Derek, maybe on the quick rotate in. Be holding towards squeak. He's got vents to worry about. He's just going to be coming around the corner. The bomb's still down towards outer. And Tyke, if he's going to drive peak, this is very difficult to, to pull off. So many angles you have to cover. Derek might even gifting him a shot. Spots him out, spams the vent, can't connect. Derek will get the better of him. And, and that's a player we were talking about before is really needing to step up for Bren if they want to be able to take this series. And he did it on Dust 2. He disappeared on Inferno. He's got 10 kills now, so maybe this is going to be his time. 
it's not going to spread to them. They're not even going to check it. Oh, they are. They're going to spray him down through the wall, but Papi Chulo's still here to show them who's their daddy. 13 seconds left. Bomb plant going down. Havoc swings, and they're going to go for eliminations instead. Well played. I like that he didn't just play the fear game and run around the silo to go for the plant, but instead realized I need to fight while my teammate's fighting. If only the people in matchmaking knew that. God damn it. Well, I mean, from what I understand, people in chat don't play matchmaking because if they did, then everyone in matchmaking would be like a global elite, right? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And yeah, look at that. Those gaps in the smoke, just ridiculous. We'd seen them actually go towards the outside a lot and jump across. Um, maybe that's because of a lack of confidence in the smokes. I think it was more so the pace of the round, but in that one, they wanted to shift down, not make a whole lot of noise, that no scope from Davdov. I think even if he misses that, they probably still win. Havoc had a really good angle there on the spray because both players were focused on Dab. But I guess maybe he would have died quickly. They would have transferred over. You never know. So lucky that he hit it. Let me go five to five. All tied up as Brent come in with an SMG. Their economy not yet broken, but very close to it. This might be the time for Divine Vendetta to pick, uh, pick up a streak of rounds if they can somehow secure this. Let's see. Early Molotov thrown in to create a gap. Our idea by Bren, however, it's not going to work for them. That's such a, a costly investment, too. I mean, I guess high risk, high reward. If you do get it down correctly and you stop the smoke, it leaves a gap that they can't really feel too confident to cross, especially if you have an AWP. It also means you're going to be down a, a Molotov. And oh, damn, damn, that's not a shot he misses too often. Papachulo, I mean, how does he peep this without dying? There's three Ooh. players there. He's going to fall. And the economy out of Bren, it might be done. Wits and Pro left, an MP9 and an AWP. And Wits isn't going to be gifted in a shot. He's not going to be gifted an angle. And they're even, I thought they're going to leave one player behind to deal with him. And Pro does pick up an AK at least. Bomb has been I think it's mostly coming down to him. I mean, this retake successful. Yeah, Pro has to do it with two players on low HP. Oh, there we go. Pokemon drop. Both players are low now. This can go their way. If Pro falls, this round is pretty much over. Wits won't go for it. In fact, Wits is even still thinking about not going. Oh, Davdov, two HP as he emerges from the Molotov. He's going to be dropped. And it's all down to Ezram. The Igialis to lead himself to a victory in the headshot with an M4. Not enough. 10 seconds left on the defuse. Easily able to get that with Wits having a kiff. And six on the board for Brent. A really solid retake. Good damage done throughout. When we look towards Poppy in the in the squeaky door, if he didn't tag up that player as much as he did, they wouldn't have won that round. Because it was Ashram that he lit from 100 to 30. Every little helps. Once again, up to nine kills. Not having too bad of a game. Out of his nine kills, seven are from the off. That's kind of the story of what we said about him, right? Is that the majority of his kills will always come from the op. He's not able to play like Olivia style where he can pick up a rifle. And we'll speak of picking up things, picking up the pace here. A Divine Vendetta Havoc, not able to spot out Papachula, but it doesn't matter. Oh. They still get themselves the kills. John not able to capitalize off of the angle he had. Now it's a three on two. The bomb going to be planted. And it's down yet again to Whitson Pro. He's going to go give Davdov that M4. Surely. Go on. Give him a gift, a present. Good shot. The AWP as Ram falls. Havoc still has the M4, but just 12 health. Look how quickly he dies. And then Davdov with a Tech 9's got it all to do. Couldn't bait out the shot. And then a 7 on the board for Bren, but I mean, altogether a successful round for Divine Vendetta. They keep the CT's economy low. If they win just this next round, Bren won't be able to get a full investment through. They've got to rebuy so much. Coming into this round. Yes, two rounds back to back. If they get themselves three kills. Plus bomb plants. Yeah. The money's definitely flowing. The loss bonus is there. And Bren have to be careful. I mean, one more round, they're up to eight, right? They get the first half victory, but how they've been able to, to really bounce back off of Inferno, I think that's the that's the biggest thing for me. I think they do it again. 
We're gonna do it again with guns. Flash wasn't quite there for Ja. He isolates them one at a time. And Ja's ready for it this time. AK Whoa! Hello! Dabbed off straight through the smoke, but it's left all down to Ezran. And he can't get it done at the end of the day. Eight to five is where we go with Bren picking up another. Now they're looking damn good. Because Divine Vendetta don't have a lot of money. And, you know, I was worried if Divine Vendetta get off to such a good start as they did that you would end up with six... Uh, well, not even six rounds, that you would end up with like eight rounds on the board on their T side. But they've really cooled off and Bren started to show up yet again. This final map has proven to be a close one. And I wouldn't diss Bren's T side, it's just the, the sample size is so small that it's hard to really draw those conclusions. Vent dive, three players down, barely any damage taken. Now the pistols get the close range fights. Yeah, no rush that time. Ogun looks like he uh, TK'd up edge room just a bit there. Again, another bomb plant coming through. They're being consistent. Is the bomb gonna go down? What happened? All right, there we go. They've been consistent getting these plants. It's just about post plants. Or the four on three, I would imagine that he shouldn't really be able to pull this one off. Pokemon does get the first kill spots out of another player. They go for the repeat with the help of Tyke. Oh. Poppy gets both. Havoc left alone. And yeah, he's not even in a position to stop this anymore. Yeah, can't do anything about it. There you go, diffused for 9 to 5. What a way to get back into this half. Ain't no better scoreline other than 10 to 5. That's possible for Bren right now. That means they've got to be taken and not given any rounds over towards Divine Vendetta. Well, the one is, it'll be 9 6. And from there, I believe Divine Vendetta are still favored. This is really the, the deciding round of who's won at the half. It comes all the way down to the last. Ooh, one of the first times we've seen Wits get aggressive on outside. Actually, yeah, we haven't seen that at all out of Bren. This could completely catch him off guard. Wits gonna get one pro as well. And Poppy somewhere else on the map able to secure one. Jaws even flanking him from behind towards Ramp. They're bringing the fight directly towards them, and Bren might be able to get a 10th here down to Dom, Dom and Havoc. Two on four. And the bomb at least in the hands here of Bren, but Jaw flank has come in. The bomb now down, and Havoc alone against three. This, sh this should be unwinnable, but I said that about Pokemon in the second half pistol round on Inferno. Well, there you go. It is indeed unwinnable. And 10 to 5, we swing towards Bren at the halftime. They've got a little bit of an advantage. And a very tight scoreline for them. 11, 12, 13, 13, 14. Nice little kill distribution. Very close to the mean. And that's what you want to see. The issue for them early on was when it was 5 5. The same was true. Everybody was performing between 7 and 8 kills, I think, or 7 and 9, perhaps. Uh, but the problem was they were 5 5. They were training it back and forth with Divine Vendetta. And at that point, it's not how you make a good CT side happen. But then they found them all. Or sorry, it was four to four, actually, not five to five. But Oh no! Oh my no. How does that how does Ezra <laughs> not get the kill? He was lining up. Oh my no. He was looking at the ceiling. Oh no, it's gonna happen again. Oh my okay. <laughs> Jesus. He must be setting off some kind of an alarm when he does that, surely. Right? <laughs> Just like, okay, I've held the door for 10 seconds. They're not going to push again. She's going to look up. Bang. You're dead. Kill's going back and forth here. Papi Chulo able to take down Tyke on the outside. And for Divine Vendetta, they've still got control. They know the rotate. Oh, he's having us here in the steps of Wits. Avoids the flashbang. Comes back out. Not able to hit the shot, though. Uh, I don't like the overcommitment here. What are we doing? The Glocks that you're coming up against in numbers. Pokemon luckily able to drop one going down the vents, but they've still dropped down. They'll get the bomb plants, and it's going to be a 2v2 retake, albeit range advantage going towards the fire. Oh, what's the block? Happy, let him plant. Oh, that's so awkward. It might not even be a plant anymore. What's going on? There's like so many angles being gifted. They're trying to go for the plant here. It's still not being done though. Dom Dom comes in. I mean, they, he technically can pull it off, except he falls to Poppy. That was 
That was an awkward round, to say the I, least. I really thought Pappy had the bomb, and then I realized, okay, he doesn't. He just needs to, like, cover one of the angles. They're planning for doors, so he just needs to watch the doors. And then he's, like, just stood there blocking wits from actually getting behind the site. He should have been single door watching for the squeaky run out. The, the double door run out. But, uh, oh, yeah, look, it works in the end. What can you say? Papi Chulo with a 3k, bring them up to 17 frags. Top frag on the server by quite a bit. Divine Vendetta, after the pause, will be looking for presumably an eco. But no, I see armor bought up. It's going to be D. Well, of course it's Deagles. Why not? I'll, I'll tell you why not. Because they got. They lost the pistol round, and so they'd have a decent amount of money coming into the next round to get M4s out and really fight against uh, Bren, but they don't want that. They believe in the Deagles. Let's see how it goes for them. Hey, I mean, like I said before, Deagles can do some work. But obviously, it's all about context here, Mitch. Bringing it up again. All about the situation. Edrim, oh, he's already fallen. Only five kills for him, unfortunately. I mean, Tyke had a very strong start. I think he was like 8 0 at one point, or like very close to it. I'm just gonna rush straight towards Ramp Havoc. Looking to get away. It might be Chase, the drop. Will be coming through. He's gonna have to reload though with only three bullets. He does somehow get around the corner and down the ramp in time. And he's still gonna be completely overwhelmed. And these pistols, though, they've done nothing. Well, of course, to talk about Tyke, who gets one. Uh, ideally, should be it. Dab Dab left alone. Let's see Brent get themselves to 12. At 11 and 5, I hate that forest buy. I really do. And you just got to take the M4s out in the next round. The risk just isn't worth it to try and pull you. You're already trying to pull yourself back from a deficit. Now it's so much more. And not just because they're going to be 12 5 down, because Brent saved so many weapons. That's provided Dab Dab doesn't get a nice exit here and at least steal one of the rifles away. No. So look, they build up a lot of money. Now they're up against an eco. Even more money built up. Wits is still got an SMG. Even more money built up. And Divine Vendetta, they have to take the eco. If they force by here, they might as well just hit Surrender. Well, here we go. I mean, if Deagles don't work, PT-50s will, right? That's how we go. I mean, I think, I'm assuming with the flashbang edge I'm sitting on. Well, I would have thought they were going to push with it. So he's going to go up. Oh, well, he's looking to go up in towards heaven. I think he just spotted out them going down towards the ramp room, and they're going to have, well, pretty much every player here to get the bomb down. And those successful rounds should be coming through for Bren. How successful will be the question, leaving two players back towards ramp, but they did get flanked. More pro, he's looking to build up money. Mac 10 comes through. He's got two more players, and that's a quick little 3k for him. 3200 in the pocket at the moment. And Ezrim last alive with a few 50 in the flash. Maybe he can steal away a gun. Would be the worst case. He does get the kill on a Derek, and he can rescue this Glil. But you can already see the T swarming around. They've left the bomb completely, even just one player back. Yeah, they know that in a round like this, he probably doesn't even have a kit, so it'll be a 10-second stick. We're looking for the kill instead. No armor on him. Spray. Good fresh run. Okay. Damage is decent. Pro can't get a rifle, can he? No. He's left with a Mac 10 so they've lost a rifle as well. That's at least an upside. Some damage done. They didn't manage it in the previous, but the P250 somehow actually did work out better. You were saying it ironically, Jason, but it proves to be true. Yep. Here we just, go. It was just how poor the previous round was. Yeah, that was Deagles, unfortunately. But now we have the M4s, right? We have an AUG for Dab Dog. Ace being picked up yet again for Brandon Molotov, separating them completely. The smoke finally comes in, though a little bit too late. He will be the first to fall. Job even being tagged up as Derek's going to go down, and this is not working out here for Bren. I feel like someone should have been quicker on that smoke. Even draw back as well. Trying to catch any rotators. Wits gets a kill in a Havoc. Puts things a little bit closer. It's a 3-on-5 into the 3-on-4. One more person towards ramp. Jaw, I mean, before he dies, even though he was low in HP, gets some decent damage in. This window going to be broken. They're going to be coming around. Single door side. And 
Well, they might just rush right straight into the bomb. The Wits. Where has this Wits been? Two kills coming through. There's a player towards Rent. There's a player under him. Pro now left alone. He gets the spread of the first, but the bomb's being stuck. Two seconds left, and he can't get to it. There you go. Divine Vendetta will win the round, but it will cost them everything. Losing every single player, and Bren are still going to have money to spend this round anyways. Yep. They're going to have so much cash, and for the CT side, that's not the case. As you said, it cost them everything, and with the reserves they had, well, that is literally everything. The round win sets them up worse than a loss would have. Only that they've got a sixth round now, at least. That was nuts by wits up above. Really good positioning, and just a shame that he fell when he did. But as we come now into 13 to 6, you can see Brad have got a significant advantage over their opponents, and not just in weaponry, but in HP. Havoc's been spammed down to just 15 health. Ramp is almost ripe for the taking, but the T's don't know that yet. And as they push towards him, he's now on the head peak angle behind the block. He was on the head peak angle. They're going to boost him up. I like this idea. I think it's much better than him playing headshot because even a nade might fly through and take him down. Whereas now he's safe from any of that sort of shit, any of those shenanigans. Coming into the final round, or final minute of the round. Brian haven't really got a lot of control. Uh, they're setting up for smokes on outside at the moment. There's a decent chance that they actually move towards them considering they've no presence on ramp. And yeah, they're all going back towards the T-spawn for those smokes. I'm a dead are getting aggressive here. All right, pushing in towards the hut. You can see the rest of Ren, though, going to be going outer. They're going to leave Jaw back behind them, maybe act as the, uh, the alert. Maybe sort of a fake as he tries to hit towards ramp. He's just going to be swarmed. He's going to be surprised. You see three players here. He gets the first kill and gets away, and a second, and a third. What just happened? Divine Vendetta, you had a three-on-one. And now they're trying to save already. Davdos just going to retreat back to CT spawn, or should be. Oh my god. It's just all gone wrong here. I think that round was basically like a nade. It just got thrown incredibly hard. Divine Vendetta, every fight they took to Ja, all three, one by one. Havoc, he's got a ch Oh, he's missed. Oh, he's missed again. If Amaz picked up, run for your life, Havoc. But he can't get out. Wits was staring him down with the AWP after tagging him up earlier on. From 14 to 6. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. A game that doesn't matter for Bren. Not in the slightest. They could lose this, and it would have no impact on their life, their earnings, their RMR points. Literally nothing. But Divine Vendetta. They needed this. It actually severely impacts their chances of picking up any more points because they're, uh, as you said, Jason, if they lose this, they're up against Tyloo in the first stage of the playoffs. Oh. Well, again, back to the Deagles. They may work out well before. So far, not working well in this round. Two rounds left to go, potentially, as Derek's going to open things up on towards Outer. It just seems like, where, where was, so, okay, okay. Divine Vendetta has 16-1 on, on Inferno. A 16-1. What's going on here on Nuke? I understand they haven't really been <laughs> able to have solid buys. We haven't seen the yacht picked up for Davdov. Derek gets another kill. Davdov is waiting, but instead he's going to go a different direction. Ezra's just going to fall in a clean round yet again, coming in through Bren. That's and Divine Vendetta. 15. I'll, I'll add to your point here, Jason. Divine Vendetta got a 16-1 on Inferno, uh, which was Bren's map pick. And now we're here. How? You may ask. You may keep asking. You will not get an answer. It has been a confusing scenario, to say the least. Now it looks set to continue that way with 15-6 on the board. Bren facing off against three SMGs and two FAMAS. Very limited utility, and if they win this round, they've got the series. They waited so long to show us their true face. Unfortunately, it's only when they're already out of the tournament that they start to perform. Yeah, when you got nothing to lose, right? Nothing on the line, no pressure. Flash into garage. 
Oh, he's going to look to push through. He's got two players he's been able to spot out and get the information to. Pokemon, well, he's going to fall. Havoc going to join into the fray. And one of the bombs going to drop forward. Three on two. Three on one. Wits left alone. Spots out the first. Now the one on two. Weaponry is still not going to be that great for the CT side. At the same time, it's going to be hard for Wits with just the P250 in hand now to push up, get the bomb, and get away somewhere. He's got time to work with. He has so many angles he has to cover. First piece of the puzzle now done. Recovering the bomb. I mean, the thing is, with the way they're holding, he could get a bomb plant. However, down towards the lower bomb site would be the play. Mm. Does so he, he know that, to though? to go for that. Yeah. 30 seconds left. Moving towards the vent. There we go. Dippity dipping down. He's going to get a plant at this stage. Once he doesn't take it too slow. As soon as he opens that door, they know where he is. And they're off. He goes in, gets the bomb plant down. This is going to be a squeaky hold. Single door. I almost call it squeaky. guess it works, though. I mean, it is quite squeaky. It is. I might even say the squeakiest. They know where he is. Shirley? Tyke? Oh, he will have spotted him. He will have just have seen his legs there as he comes around the corner. It's just a pre fire. He's ready for him. Wits caught out by timing, unfortunately. And 15 to 7, we go at least one more round on the board for Divine Vendetta. And, uh, well, Jason, as you said before, this game is all about who faces Tyloo. Invictus. Wait, hold on. Invictus beat Tyloo. And have one game left to play. So technically, if Tyloo lose their game versus Tiger and Invictus beat Beyond, which, I mean, both of those things are viable, then Invictus would be seed one and Tiger would be seed two. In which case, Divine Vendetta would want to lose this game. <laughs> but. I don't think you'd take quite that gamble. More than likely, Tyler will be will be taking seed number one in this tournament. And that means that more than likely, if Divine Vendetta don't manage a comeback to overtime of eight rounds in a row and then win overtime on this map, that they'll face off against the best team in Asia in the quarterfinals. And that oh. one will hurt. You don't know Havoc's here? Well, now they're... Oh, no. I was really hoping for at least one there. Maybe look for the bomb plant, but his position was given up. The door going to be naded down. The Pokemon's gifted and angled, having opened himself. Four on three, the retake. Not the best weapons. They have an opt for Davdov. Not going to be the ideal for this either. So, cautious Brenner being about this. Tight going to push down the stairs. He's going to be in for a very bad time as Poppy Chula takes the head clean off of him. Now just two left, and they're both coming from the same exact angle. They're gonna round the corner into Wits. Pokemon will get the first spray for Jaw, and this should be it. I don't see a world now where Dadbot can clutch us out. Eight seconds left. He's actually not been spotted by Jaw, <laughs> but eventually he will be finished off. This will be a quad kill for him. And that's gonna do it. Bren, Esports, gonna take another victory. Their second overall within the whole tournament, and they will shut down chances for Divine Vendetta to maybe get out of that seed. You know, you didn't see Divine Van Dead on the right side of the glass there because they just got shattered. That was uh, that was an incredible series. For them to come through 16, won the second map, and then lose there, I, I don't know. And luckily, I don't need to know what happened because we've got two beautiful boys here who are going to tell us exactly what happened. Let us know here. Think of blah. What's going on? How? That's not why? The, not, not the best intro, Mitch. Uh, but that's why. Uh, yeah, nice. that was the weirdest game of Counter Strike we've seen in this tournament so far. It doesn't make sense from start to finish. Divine Vendetta come into Dust Two looking rough. Individuals not showing up. Then they come into the second map and they just stomp Bren. There's nothing. They literally do nothing the entire game. Two players, Derek and I believe Wits, had six kills combined on Inferno. And now we head into Train. And, uh, sorry, Nuke. Very interesting looking Train. But we head into Nuke and it's a complete different story. It's Bren showing up and, and Divine Vendetta not doing anything. Thing. And they look like such a good team on this map in the previous matches we've seen from them. So I'm a little confused. I, I just don't really understand how you can go from looking so good on one map to just completely flat on the other. And also, you know, the reverse from that in, in respect to Bren. It's, uh, it's a weird scenario, but I played a Bren. Uh, at least the pressure is kind of off. They show up, they show us that they can win games. Unfortunately, far too little, too late. 
honestly, like, I, I agree with you. It feels like, if you look at all the three maps, it's like watching six different teams playing, right? Like, for yep. Bren as well as for Divine Vendetta. So different. And I think there was at one round, Jason, uh, Mitch, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I forget who it was. Was it Ja? Yeah, it was Ja. He was alone towards lobby the three cts yeah. it's a 1v3 yeah. and they peek him one by one there by one like there we go right they're perfectly timed they, they know where he is why is pokemon swinging out wide like that alone why is tight not swinging with him he should just get one kill in that moment and i think that just it's very i think that's a very good tell as to how divine vendetta played new and i don't understand i really cannot wrap my head around why they played so terribly in this map looking at inferno it was incredible and it's complete about turn to just fall asleep 